Hi, I'm uh, Javier Torres Roca. I'm a radiation oncologist at Moffitt Cancer Center, and I've been working on genomics and the inter integration of the genomics into the clinical practice of radiation oncology for several years. And I'm Jake Scott. Uh, I'm a Cleveland Clinic radiation oncologist and physician scientist, and Javier and I are going to present on behalf of all our other co-authors the key findings from our recent paper, Pan Cancer Prediction of Radiotherapy Benefit Using Genomic Adjusted Radiation Dose Guard, a cohort-based pooled analysis. So Coming into this paper, about four years ago, we presented the concept of the genomic adjusted radiation dose. And what GUARD really measures, units of GUARD really encode units of biological effect in the patient. So right now in radiation oncology, we do a really good job of very precisely measuring what comes out of the machine, what comes out of the linear accelerator. And we measure that in gray. And that's a, a unit of measure that's um, SI units and accepted everywhere. And we measure this with incredible and beautiful precision. But what we now know is that the clinical outcome really depends on the effect of that radiation. And that can vary widely between patients. So even two gray given to two different patients could have a widely different effect. And so what we've done is presented a concept of taking the individual doses patient, patients receive. So in this case, I'm showing you a distribution of doses uh, patients receive for breast cancer. And through a mathematical transformation using a genomic classifier called the radiation sensitivity index, we can calculate something called the genomic adjusted radiation dose. And so going from the distribution of doses you see here, using the genomics actually reveals a wide heterogeneity of predicted biological effect of those doses. In some cases, a very high delivered dose, what comes out of the machine, can actually encode for a very low biological effect. And the same is true the other way around and all sorts of relationships. And so here is a real plot of a real cohort of patients who received some small range of radiation dose, as you can see on the left, and where you can see where it encodes this wide range of guard on the right. And we actually did this in this paper with a huge cohort of, of eight different disease sites and cancer types and you can see there's wide heterogeneity across. And so the question we sought to answer in this paper was, does adding the genomic dimension to our dose, does adding the concept of measuring the effect on the patient rather than what comes out of the machine associate with clinical outcome in radiation treated patients? So, uh, so what we did is that we, uh, we performed a pool analysis of all publicly available cohorts in the literature that had enough information to calculate uh, RSI uh, and to calculate GARD and that had clinical outcome associated uh, with, with that uh, cohort. And we had a total of uh, 1,615 uh, patients from a total of 11 cohorts across seven different cancer types uh, that we were able to identify. And in collaboration with uh, Jeff uh, Cedar and uh, Michael Catan, uh, we perform a stratified uh, cost regression analysis uh, where we integrated all this data and we analyzed whether GARD uh, or RT dose um, uh, studied as continuous variable, uh, variables could predict the outcome of the, of the patients. We also did an interaction analysis to determine whether GARD was predictive of radiotherapy benefit uh, in the cohorts. So in the next slide, what we show uh, is really the description of these uh, cohorts that include uh, patients with breast cancer, uh, glioma, head and neck cancer, uh, melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer, pancreas, um, and also triple negative uh, breast cancer. Uh, some of them had radiation, some of them did not have radiation, and we're using the patients that didn't have radiation as negative controls. So we integrated all of this into a meta-analysis, and uh, the, uh, this is a classic forest plot showing the results uh, in each of the individual cohorts. And then at the very bottom uh, in black, we have the pool resort, uh, results, uh, including all the um, uh, uh, patients. Uh, and as you can see, GARD is a predictor of uh, clinical outcome, or I should say it's associated with clinical outcome, both in overall survival and first recurrence as a continuous variable, uh, but critically, physical dose is not. And here we report physical dose uh, as equivalent dose at two gray in the bottom panel. Um, and as you can see, the black dots at the bottom, there's essentially uh, no predictive ability uh, of physical dose. So critically, what this is showing is that the biological effect that's induced uh, by the physical dose 
as quantified by GAR tells you more about the clinical outcome of the patient that you're treating than the dose you're actually delivering. Um, also importantly, we show that in patients treated without radiation, we calculated a sham guard. We sort of simulated that these patients had received radiation to see uh, if the parameter of guard would predict the outcome uh, of these patients. And as you can see, there is no association uh, in the pooled analysis uh, between sham guard and, um, and, and clinical outcome. So the critical um, uh, idea here is that, of course, you know, if the um, if GARD is associated uh, or is only predictive in patients that are receiving radiation, here we present uh, the analysis um, by dichotomizing by whether patients receive radiation therapy or not. Uh, and as you can see, the uh, patients that receive radiation, GARD is highly associated with the clinical outcome. A higher GARD uh, results in a better uh, survival on the right or uh, recurrence-free survival uh, on the left. Uh, but in patients that do not receive radiation in red, uh, the GAR parameter uh, has no interaction or no association uh, with outcome. And critically, uh, when we look at the wall statistic, we can we demonstrate that uh, GARD is actually predictive uh, of the radiotherapy benefit, uh, at least in the overall survival um, uh, outcome. So now that we have demonstrated um, that GARD, the, biolo as the biological effect of radiation dose, um, tells you more about the outcome of the patient, uh, what a, re a clinician really wants is to really understand for the patient they have in front of them, what can they do with the dose in order to maximize the benefit of that dose to the patient. And this is what we're actually presenting here. We're actually presenting a quantification of the relative benefit of dose modification for an individual patient. So as you modify your physical dose, guard will change. And so here you can understand how that can impact the outcome of your individual patient in front of you. For some patients, changing guard is easy, but for other patients, changing guard can take a significant amount of dose and normal toxicity to cause. So our intention here is to demonstrate how that benefit is distributed in your population depending on what GARD you're achieving. So in conclusion, GARD is significantly associated with overall survival and recurrence in patients with radiotherapy. And critically, radiation therapy dose is not. We demonstrate that GARD is predictive of the therapeutic benefit of radiotherapy and provides a quantification of the relative benefit of radiotherapy for each individual patient and finally, we think that GARD provides a clinically validated prescription paradigm that enables genomic medicine in radiation oncology.